Welcome to another episode of Fortify Your Faith. Uh, today I'm going to talk about conversion, because uh, this video is coming out on January 25th, which is the conversion of St. Paul, the feast day of conversion of St. Paul. And many times we think of conversion, at least culturally and stuff, of, with regards to religion. Oh, you're converting from this religion to that religion, from this uh, particular faith group to that group over there. Uh, which is true. There's a change. There's kind of a, a turning. That's what conversion comes from, a turning uh, to, from one thing to another. But uh, as as Christians, as Catholic Christians, it's not just, a, well, I'm, I, was, I was baptized as an infant. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about converting. No, no, actually, there's this idea of ongoing conversion. Uh, and uh, that it's just part of our, our discipleship of Christ, following the Lord, growing in holiness, uh, requires ongoing conversion. Now, the life of St. Paul, uh, he you know, was going to Damascus uh, in chapter 9 of Acts, then he reaccounts it again in chapter 22, and even later on, uh, when he's in, uh, in Rome on trial. Uh, but he's going to Damascus to imprison Christians, and he gets knocked down. There's a light. He gets knocked down. There's a light. Now, here's an image of a horse. Uh, there's no actual record of a horse being there. Almost most artistic renderings have a horse. I couldn't find a, uh, the one I know that's really good that doesn't have a horse. Almost all of them do, though. Uh, but it's, it does have the imagery. Of, he gets knocked off his horse, figuratively at least. Uh, maybe literally if he was on a horse. Uh, but this idea of he's knocked down and Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? Uh, and Paul says, who are you? Uh, I'm Jesus Nazarene. Why are you persecuting? He's persecuting the church, his body, uh, uh, Christ's mystical body. And there's a conversion here, uh, kind of it's the stepping point of, uh, he goes to Ananias, receives his sight again, and he gets baptized, and there's this convert and change, and he becomes the kind of the, the apostle to the Gentiles. Um, founds all these churches uh, in, in Asia Minor, in Greece, and, and then finally going to Rome uh, in trial. Uh, there's, he didn't find, found the, the church in Rome, uh, but he does look forward when he goes to Rome, because he said, you know, he wants to go to the ends of the earth with the gospel. Uh, but the conversion of St. Paul isn't just like a, a once and done type thing, even though it can look like that if you read the scripture accounts, if you just read kind of isolated parts. Uh, but he does mention in first, the first chapter of Galatians that after kind of this encounter with the Lord, uh, he went off to Arabia and then spent, and it wasn't until three, you know, kind of uh, spent three years in Damascus and then went up to Jerusalem. So there seems to be this kind of ongoing, even, even after the initial thrust of getting knocked down, uh, kind of the initial conversion, uh, there must, there's something deeper, it took time. And, and Paul, he would, he would readily admit that, yeah, he wasn't, he was a, a work in progress. That's, that's what we are. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we're, we're works, we're humans in, in growth. It's, and so ongoing conversion uh, is, part, is part of our spiritual life. Uh, okay, Lord, what's, what area do I need to grow in? And you can either, it can be focused on kind of either, well, okay, what's the, what's the biggest we, the vice <laughs> I'm struggling with uh, right now, or even isolating it to a particular relationship I'm having difficulty in. Okay, how am I, am I handling things right? Or how can I grow in here? Uh, as, or, or, and then also the virtues um, of prudence on decision-making, fortitude, kind of having courage, mean, uh, kind of patience, uh, temperance, uh, fairness, justice, uh, the different kind of virtues and such. Uh, we're, we're, those are kind of where ongoing conversion is. And with ongoing conversion, it has a, you could call a, a life, a death and life uh, sequence to it of something needs to die uh, so that of my way of acting, so that a new way of acting can come about. Uh, and many times we need, you know, kind of a call on the Lord. I, I, we can only do so much on our own. So we call on the Lord, Lord, okay, help, help this area of my life die. This, this behavior, this activity, this way of thinking, and the Lord wants that to die so that it can be a resurrection. Uh, even, you know, going to, to Mass uh, and, and praying, you know, asking, Lord, I want this to die uh, and, and brought to new life here at this Mass. Bring, bring me the grace, Lord. I need the grace to die in this area of my life. 
so that new life can come about. Because uh, that's Jesus' image in John chapter 12. Of, unless a seed dies, it remains just a seed. But if it dies, uh, it will you know, grow, grow into a plant. It will bring new life. Uh, so, But it doesn't have to be something where you think, oh, die. That's only like really serious things maybe have to die. But, well, there's even the image of pruning. Uh, in John chapter 15, with the, the, the vine and the branches, it's kind of, there's even this, this the image of kind of uh, uh, pruning so that fruit can come about. Uh, and one way to see that kind of just applicable is sometimes we can be doing so many things and you know, think we're all doing all this good stuff, but it's not bearing fruit because I'm doing too much. It's not reflective. It's what's the motivation why I'm doing it. Uh, and so um, this aspect of pruning, I know one priest who, he was at a parish uh, as an associate. They had a great youth program starting up and stuff, and he was all excited. And then he was asked to move. And uh, and it was hard. He realized, you know, later on, like, oh, that was, like, I had to prune that. Uh, I had to be pruned. Uh, kind of that, it was something good going, but there was, uh, he was needed elsewhere. Uh, I'm not saying that because I'm getting moved anywhere. Hey, I'm, I'm pastor here. Uh, I got a six-year term and hope to stay longer. Uh, so not to scare anybody with that this video. But this idea of sometimes like giving those things up, pruning, uh, those things have to be pruned that are, they're good. They can be good things, uh, but sometimes there's uh, it's uh, kind of be open to where God wants to work or even sometimes too much. If you have a, a plant, an apple tree or something, too much growth, uh, it's not going to produce any apples. Uh, and so this idea of ongoing conversion, uh, Jesus says, repent and believe in the gospel, his, his message, follow me. And uh, that's kind of, we hear that it's not just, we have Lent every year, we have, uh, you know, especially to focus on this need for conversion, not just because for a season, uh, or, well, we just do it Lent, and then it's just other people, other years, people, other people, but I just don't have to really participate. No, actually, uh, it's kind of, it's to remind us that we're to live lives of ongoing conversion. Uh, and that's where new growth can come. So, and something has to die in us uh, so that new life can come about in our behavior. Uh, it's that we can love more deeply, more in union with the, and live lives more in union with the Lord.